But yeah, once I add that phaser in before the distortion, um, actually, if you want to hear it, I'll put the phaser on after distortion to show you how much of a difference it makes if you um, play things properly. Oh, and what I just did, if you see this little uh, yellow thing that's popping up up here, you press C, and that is a loop region. I don't know why they put it as C. I don't really know what that means, but you can also click on this thing down here. Oh, cycle region. Cycle. I like to call it loop. I guess these are loops anyways. A cycle region. We're going to cycle this. You can click this or hit C, and uh, it, you can adjust the length of time that you want to uh, loop. And that way you can just sample the same area over and over again. Um, here how it sounds sort of like a laser, or an alien computer. Uh, that's because we're putting phaser on after distortion. So you're phasing the distortion. But what I want to do is actually phase this dead sound that I have here from the digital mono. Hear how it's going in and out now? Well, in order to get up to that Game Boy retro sound, hit distortion. And it's not perfect because, you know, I'm throwing a bunch of random effects on there when the producer himself, uh, whoever made Kesha's song, uh, just went in and took the software instrument or sample that he liked and just threw it right in there. It's already created. He doesn't have to worry about trying to layer effects and complicate things in order to get the sound he wants. He just clicks a button and boom, it's there. Start making some notes and that's what you got. Um, but that's what I did for the high retro sound. Uh, they also have a left retro or uh, left channel. Uh, retro sound, which, by the way, that is over here, your uh, pan, or, f uh, yeah, I guess pan, what do they call this one? They have so many weird, yeah, pan. Uh, left, on the left side, they have this uh, a low sound. Let me play that for you. That's what's going on in the left ear, and then what they also have on the right ear is that thing that I was playing earlier. And then this one is just to add a little bit of a high note. Um, I'll turn it on and off so you can hear what I added, but it just it just adds another layer to the the sound itself key thing in a lot of the remakes that I do, and a lot of what producers do, you layer tracks. You can't just make like one or two and be like, yeah, this song is awesome. A few of those do it, and I wonder how in the world those guys make money. But you know what? You, to each their own. You know, Maybe that's really the sound that they're going for, which is the two-track thing. But anyway, um, layer you tracks. Come up with different stuff. Listen to music. Good thing to listen to is classical music. Hear all the layers. This comes from my, you know, violining. When you know you have your first, second violins, you have your violas, your cellos, your basses, and when you have a full symphony, you have like an entire brass and woodwind section and percussion section. There are so many layers that create that full, awesome sound that you hear when you go to a concert and listen to things like the Philharmonic Orchestra or maybe your city orchestra. There's layers there. It's not just two people playing. Um, so, layers is tip number two for the day. Tip number one is don't use loops. Tip number two is layers. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm layering all these things in order to get the sound that I want. Oh. If you can hear it, it's really, really faint, but you would miss it if it wasn't there. Here has just this little, uh, uh, foreign sort of phasing sound. It sounds like an alien ship. It just adds a little bit of crisp sound to the instrument that I had created there in order to give it more more of a sound like the actual one from the song. Uh, another thing I did is in here, one of the things that I noticed about their samples is they have a, they have a really grungy drum sample. Whenever it's a bass hit, it sounds, it sounds cool. Uh, in order to do that, again, I use distortion. That's the bass drum, by the way. It normally sounds like this. 
in order to get it to sound like that crunchy bass drum that they have, um, I added in a regular bass that is not distorted, or where is it? This one. This one is not distorted. And neither is this one. No, this one is. Wow, they're both distorted. Oh, yeah, there's the grungy bass. That's what I did. I didn't think I distorted it, but I did. And it sounds pretty cool. So when you hit it like this, uh, this one just sounded like a sounds like a bass note, like a fail bass from the 70s. And so I added in this distorted uh, snare, I guess, in a different one in the techno kit. There are a bunch of different drum kits over here, and they have different samples. Uh, layered those, and I now have my grungy, my grungy uh, drum sound. That's what I wanted. That's what I have. That's what it is. Um, added in some orchestral strings, uh, the whole, uh, um, cymbal hit that they have at the end of, I think, every two measures, and, um, oh crap, I changed this note, I don't really know what this was at. Whenever you deal with instruments like orchestrals, do harmony, don't just do single notes, because orchestra in the background is filling up your sound, giving you that extra something to uh, make your music sound good. Um, don't just go with single notes, know that. In here, I have a high and a low in an octave, and it's only two note harmony, so your melody note and your harmony note. That's only four notes, and two of them are the same because are just in different octaves. So, so play around with that, find the sound that you want, layer them up. Tip number two. And that's the sound that I wanted. Another thing you can mess with so that I uh, show you how pretty deep these sounds can go when you change them up was the, uh, I don't even know what to call it, the, whatever the hell, the synth sound that they have in the chorus itself, talking about those DJs and turn it up. Um, one second. Um, you got to mess around with your sound to make sure that it comes out the way that you want. <laughs> So what I did is I went in and I changed up the sound and to get that that coveted uh, glissando effect, I don't even know if that's what it's called, it's a glide actually. Here we go, a glide. I wish this uh, this was just a straight vibrato, I could use that earlier. Um, I used that glide effect but the problem was they also have those two clean notes where it goes up high which are these two notes right here. So here how those two notes weren't, there was no glide to get to those notes. Put those on a separate track, there we go. It sounds like it's all coming from one instrument because it's the same sound, which was another custom sound that I made um, in order to make it sound like Kesha's. Um, 